Hallelujah. Let's give it up to God. Hallelujah. We're here one more time in the house of the Lord. Let's give God some praise. We didn't get here on our own. It was nothing but God's grace and mercy that brought us here. I think my mother can identify with that song. Being a miracle. <laughs> Most of y'all know me how it was then. But look at me now. You never know what God will do for you until you give your life over to God. You'll never know what God can work in your life if you don't step out on faith and allow God to do God's work. You'll never know what God can do in your life if you don't stand up and speak the word and have authority of yourself. You'll never know what God will do if you don't let God. I may be 39, but I've had some long 39 years. I have. And I promise God is laughing now because I'm 40, almost 40 with a six year old and a two year old. But that's still a blessing. It is still a blessing. I almost feel like I don't need to preach. Sister Brown, you did it all already. <laughs> but we have to remember how blessed we are. We have to remember where God brought us from and where God is bringing us to. If you look at where you were then, look at where you are now. If you think you can't make it, look at what you did. Look at what you've been through. <laughs> Come on. The Holy Spirit in this place, let's give God. Let's give praise. Let's give God a dance. Get up on your feet. Come on. Tomorrow is never promised. God is working it out. No matter what, God is working out. Believe. Have faith. Stand on His word. Let His word guide you. Let His word strip you. Be encouraged. Somebody got a blessing this week. Somebody got a blessing yesterday. Praise God. We got our warm-up dance. We got our warm-up dance. There is a word from God for the people of God. There's always a word from God for the people of God. Oh, most eternal God, I thank you. I thank you for one more opportunity to stand before you and give you all the honor, all the glory. Oh, gracious Lord, I ask that you remove the woman that's here before you. Allow your Holy Spirit to come and take over. Allow the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my rock. Amen, amen. Today we are here to recognize 40 years of serving God's people. The Women's Missionary Society followed the example of Jesus by serving those in need, by ensuring that the people of God are provided for. It is a blessing to see the work of God being done by God's people. Understanding the reason and the purpose of serving was the last lesson Jesus wanted to teach the disciples. So I need you to open your Bibles to John chapter 13. I'm gonna read verses one through nine and pick up at 12. Say amen when you have your, your scriptures read. Amen. All right, all right. It was just chapter 13. 
starting with verse 1. It was just before the Passover feast. Jesus knew that the time had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he now showed them the full extent of his love. The evening meal was being served, and the devil had already prompted Judas Igus, son of Simon, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around it. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you do not understand now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Well, no, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Never. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Verse 12, for when he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for this is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you shall also wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done. I tell you the truth, no servant is greater than his master, nor is the messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. All right. All right. If I had to title this, it would be, you ain't too good to get dirty. All right. Now, this particular scripture has a lot of significance. As usual, the disciples didn't understand what Jesus was trying to teach them. We all understand that John chapter 13 is not just about Jesus establishing the Last Supper, communion. It is also about an important job that Jesus expects us to perform. Jesus understood he was going to be crucified the following day at Calvary. He understood he was going to be betrayed later that night. He understood that the disciples was going to run away when the Roman soldiers came to get him. But the beginning of this chapter shows just how humble Jesus was. Jesus knew his time on earth was coming to an end, but he couldn't leave until he teach the disciples one more thing. Jesus spent his life teaching, preaching, healing, raising people from the dead, and letting the religious leaders know that their acts were also completely against what God intended. Let's be clear. Jesus was a social justice activist. He believed that all people were children of God. He believed that they deserved to be treated with respect. Like any good teacher, he gave them their final assignment. The significance of washing the feet of the disciples was highly important. I don't know about y'all. I don't know if I could wash no dirty feet, but I'm a process. I'm still a work in progress. Just before the Last Supper was to take place, Jesus took off his robe put on an apron or a towel, and began to wash their feet. This is significant in so many ways. For Jesus, it was his way to show humility and complete servitude. During this time, the washing of the feet was customary before breaking bread. You see, the people walked in sandals on dirty, dusty roads. It wasn't paved like we have out here, well, for some areas. But... Can you imagine your feet being filthy after walking all day, all night from to and fro? The table where they ate sat low, so it was unavoidable to see people's feet. When Jesus got up from the table and started to wash feet, he was doing a job that a slave or a servant would do. It's customary that the host will wash the feet or the slave or the servant of the host. But since this was a so-called closed gathering, there was no one to do it. It never occurred to the disciples to hook each other up and wash each other's feet or their own feet. The disciples couldn't believe that their Lord 
was doing the job that was considered the low of the low. You see, the disciples only looked at Jesus' title. They forgot that Jesus came to earth not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for men. Matthew 20, 28. He did not come as king or conqueror. He came, as Isaiah 53 says, a suffering servant. The very act of Jesus not only stunned the disciples, but it surprised them. He never allowed his status of savior, messiah, king of kings, lord of lords, way maker, comfort, the truth and the light to stop him from doing his job. Right. It is safe to say that this act of humility foreshadowed the love that he had for us by dying on the cross. This act of servanthood was a contradiction to what the disciples thought. Remember, these are the same disciples who in Luke 22, 24 was arguing about who is Jesus' right-hand man. When Peter objected, Jesus simply told him, unless I wash you, you have no part of me. Jesus was trying to get disciples to understand that as followers of him, we are to imitate him serving one another with our whole heart and mind, seeking to build one another up in love and humility. When we think and act and live as if we're superior to others, we displease, displease the Lord who promised that true greatness in his kingdom is attained by those with the servant's heart. In Mark 9, 35 states, sitting down, Jesus called the 12 and said, Anyone who wants to be first must be the very last and the servant of all. And 1044 states, and whoever wants to be first must be slave of all. When we have a true servant's heart, Jesus promised us we will be highly blessed. By performing the acts of simply washing the disciples' feet, Jesus revealed not only his true nature, but the character he wants us all to develop. This lesson is so critical for the life of a Christian. When you think that you are better than someone else and not being able to serve with humility, the love of God does not grow. It does not get seen. No one sees it. If Jesus can get on his knees before a man and get his hands dirty, why can't we? By doing this, we show that we have a true heart of a servant. I was wondering why John, the only gospel writer to pull this out in chapter 13, Amen. to show Jesus' humble state. Maybe it was time to show Jesus' humility and his complete servanthood to humankind. Yeah. <clears throat> Let's understand this is not just about washing some nasty, dirty feet. It shows us that we ought to always serve with a humble heart. If Jesus said, if I then, your master and rabbi, have washed your feet, is it also your duty to wash another's feet? Simply, if we could get our hands dirty like Christ can, are we not fulfilling what Christ told us to do? For I have set you an example in order that you may do what I have done. Jesus was willing to get his hands dirty to get the job done. It didn't matter if he was the Messiah. In order to get the job done, you had to get your hands dirty. We expect rewards, promotions, and appreciation on our jobs. When that doesn't happen, we become upset and bitter. Maybe we should stop looking at rewards through our physical eyes and look at rewards through our spiritual eyes. Can you imagine living in a time where this custom of washing the feet of house guests was the lowest of low? A, a, a service that was the most disliked. Mm -hmm. Jesus did not expect us to do something he had not done himself. Right. This is not only a true mark of a spiritual leader, but an example of what it means to serve others. Amen. Peter's objection is not like our objections in life. We have the mentality that we are too good to do certain things. Let's be clear. Again, I'm not talking about washing feet. I'm talking about serving people with our whole heart and exemplifying what Christ did. Peter thought Jesus was too good to do a task like washing feet. 
He had the mentality, like the Pharisees and all those other religious leaders, that because they had that certain stature and status, they didn't have to do things like that. But his way is, it, we can see that today. We can see that today. People thinking that they're so much better and that they don't have to do anything. We have a governor in office right now who says that he is for the people, but you cut the very funding that provides support for people in need. How many times have you said you weren't going to do something that could benefit others because you thought you, thought you were better than them? I don't remember Jesus ever saying that he was better than anybody. I don't remember reading that anywhere in the scriptures. Come on, y'all. Stay with me. All right. Jesus took the time out to wash the feet of his brothers, to show them what it means to serve others. He preached and he healed those who were deemed low lives, uh -huh. the woman at the well, uh -huh. the woman who had the issue with blood, yeah. the blind man. Yeah. It was those people that Jesus lifted up. Yeah. It was those people he came to remind that God loves them. Yeah. It was those people that he converted. Oh, ah. Peter's objection was about, wasn't about feeling uncomfortable. It was about him thinking and believing that Jesus was too good to do such a task. Maybe he was right, maybe he was wrong, but Jesus did not think so himself. Jesus was doing what was needed to save people from themselves and oppression. As usual, Peter and the other disciples still failed to get it. I don't understand. You've been with Jesus this whole time. You walked with him, you talked with him, you broke bread with him, and you still don't get what he was teaching. All right. I'm going to leave that one alone. That's another sermon. All the works of Jesus was about servanthood. The simple act of washing feet teaches us the kind of humility God wants us to have. While washing the feet is expected of us during the yearly Passover is important, but what difference does it make if we can't show acts of kindness, compassion, and empathy to those in need? How can you expect to be blessed and please God if you aren't willing to get your hands dirty? The act of servanthood is supposed to be the model for Christians today. But the question is, are we really modeling the behavior of Christ? I'm going to leave that one alone too. I want to back up to my reference and say that Jesus is a social justice activist. When Jesus, our Lord and Savior, washed the disciples' feet, this presented a different side of the law than that of the religious leaders. You see, in Jerusalem, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and all the other religious leaders ruled the religious realm. They were known for their fine robes, lavish lifestyle, and well-versed knowledge of Scripture. They quickly condemned the people for the smallest infraction, regularly overlooking their own personal acts of social injustice. These religious leaders used the law to hold and keep people oppressed. Come on, stay with me now. I know we see this. They were disgusted, disturbed, and bothered that Jesus ate with the lowest of the low. They considered sinners, tax collectors, people suffering from disease, and demons possessed as the lowest of the low. Come on now. Some of us have said that ourselves. Let's keep it real here. The religious leaders felt that they were unclean, unworthy. They believed that their position of leadership following the letter of the law guaranteed them heavenly rewards. These same religious leaders believed that they were saved from God's wrath when in fact they were inviting it. What Jesus demonstrated was the complete opposite of what they believed. They overlooked the heart of the law. To love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. To love your neighbors as yourself. How can you say you love God when you treat your neighbor like crap? How can you say you are a child of God when you can't get your hands dirty? Stop complaining about what ain't going on in the church if you're not stepping up and doing what needs to be done in the church. 
By washing the disciples' feet, Jesus was teaching them and us that those who want to be great in God's eyes allow themselves to be less in the eyes of man. A true servant leader offers to perform no task no one else would do. To serve as Jesus did for the benefit of another show the deepest level of love and humility. If you think you are too good to do a job of a servant like Jesus did, then you don't understand the Christian's, the Christian's humble service to God, the church, and the people. Right. This act that Jesus performed is showing us the spiritual meaning of this physical act. Peter's suggestion was like that of the Pharisees. Jesus should never have to lower himself, lower himself to do such a job. What Jesus did had nothing to do with personal hygiene, but everything to do with serving. Y'all say serving with me. Y'all die now. Come on. We're going to get out of here. Come on. This is what the missionary society means, to serve, to get your hands dirty. We have 40 years of service of getting your hands dirty, and it's paying off. Serving those in need is our calling, their spiritual needs, their mental needs, their physical needs, and their emotional needs. This is what Christ was displaying. If Jesus can get his hands dirty, why can't we? In other words, if Jesus Christ is willing to humble himself and unconditionally serve the disciples in a lowly human task like washing of nasty feet, we should follow his example and be willing to perform even the most unpleasant task for those in need and for each other. Remember, the Apostle Paul, who recorded these events, later explained this attitude with a simple question. But whoever has this world's goods and see his brother in need and shut up his heart from him, how does the love of God abide in him? 1 John 3, 17. No follower of Christ is set himself above serving any other human being. God observes his people and blesses those who honor him by serving as channels of truth and examples of true spirituality. Jesus instituted this foot washing ceremony to illustrate that he had come to serve mankind. Mm -hmm. He had earlier made this clear to those who follow him. Going back to Matthew chapter 20, verses 25 through 28. Mm -hmm. You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those who are great exercise authority over them. Yet it shall not be so among you. But whoever desires to become great among you, let him be your servant. And whoever desires to be first among you, let him be your slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. Christ's ultimate, ultimate service for humankind was his willingness to give his life for us, which occurred the following day. His example of humility, service, and generosity is all the more touching because it contrasts with the attitude of the rest of humanity. Our natural tendency is to look for ways to make others serve us. But God's way is to serve others. Serving others, God's way, imposes no conditions and expects no rewards. But love even your enemies do good and lend, hoping for nothing in return. And your reward will be great, and you will be sons and daughters of the Most High. For he is kind to the unthankful and evil. This powerful scripture tells us much more about God's character. That his approach is one of the unbiased service to humankind. Let's keep it real. Our way may work for a little while but it won't last. It may give us some benefits, but in the long run, it traps us. Service to others leaves on. Taking or serving the self dies with those who seek to serve themselves. Serving in God's capacity is hard. It's going to be hard. God never promised sunshine all the time. We have to go through the motions 
because in the midst of our, one of my friends say, in the midst of being in our feelings, because we're having a hard time, it's going to be a blessing to someone else. Those who will follow Jesus must ask some tough questions. Will we dedicate ourselves to the way Jesus provides service? Can we humbly service those, or will we go the way of the world, demanding and taking and serving ourselves? Better yet, are we too good to think and believe that we can't get our hands dirty? Christ's example of washing his friends, his brothers, feet is a reminder of that fundamental choice. We could do several things that will help us understand and capture Jesus' attitude as she showed us what it means to humble ourselves and serve. Understand what it means to serve with our whole heart. Understand what it means to get your hands dirty and not worrying about your title and your status. Understand that you are no better than the next person in the sight of God because you have letters behind your name, you live in a big house, you drive a fancy car, and you got a good job. That's not so. We need to ask God to help us better understand and practice the spirit of giving. We need to seek God's attitude of humility and service by researching and studying the many examples of it in the Bible. Abraham, Ruth, Daniel, Paul, Timothy. We also need to Look for ways to serve and act on it. Stop saying what you're going to do. Just do it. Let's keep in mind the wonderful lesson of washing the disciples' feet. It symbolizes our serving others with humility and without imposing our own conditions. It's not about us, it's about God. Jesus tells us to illuminate his ashes in this simple ceremony. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Then he shows us the results of a selfless, serving attitude. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. Hallelujah. Right. Amen, amen. Remember, serving God is not about us. It's about the building of God's kingdom. Yeah. We can't say and talk about, oh, you need to be saved, there's salvation, if we're not out there in the trenches with the people. How do you expect to save souls and bring souls into the kingdom of God if we're not doing the service? If Jesus... Our Lord and Savior, the man who died on the cross for all our sins, can get on his knees before a man and wash their feet to show what it means to be humble and service. Why can't we do it? Not just in these four walls, but outside of these four walls. Won't you stand, please? The challenge is to do as Jesus has done. And Jesus went out, stayed outside the walls. He came to church, but he was on his way to do this work. He came to worship. He left to serve. Amen. Amen. On page 235 this morning, we make the invitation to those who have not gotten started on that journey of serving the Lord. I can hear my Savior calling. He's calling clearly this morning through Minister Huey. And he's saying, come, my child, and take a, a stand for me, and I will stand up on the inside of you and do that which you cannot do. 
As you are here this morning, if you have not invited the Lord Jesus into your heart, we would want you to just come down the aisle and we'll introduce you to him. If you would come by faith, trust me, he'll meet you at this altar. 